one. Two. Three. Yo guys, what is going on? Um, this isn't live, funnily enough, because uh, while playing this, I realised that actually playing on medium, even for me, is a bit of a distraction. Uh, and I always did go for all periods of up to like 30 seconds, a minute or something, of literally sitting there in silence playing, uh, because uh, as the teams obviously get harder, you saw how easy it was against Romania, Scotland, maybe because I was just sort of not really paying attention. Um, at one point, you know, start to put a bit of pressure on and I just can't make the game work really for me so instead I decided to uh, just stop stop recording and I just thought to myself I'll do it like this instead like like normal um, because what I actually want to talk about is a lot of stuff that involves me looking off screen at results on scores and things like that and that is just like the next stages of the World Cup um, so I'll let that play behind in the background you can probably sense when I would be uh, yelling and going on unfortunately it's not quite the same I know but um, otherwise just bear with me and uh, if you're interested in what is going on with the Rugby World Cup at the moment then stick around otherwise guys uh, yeah you're in this one's shorter so maybe you will want to stick around for once only about a couple of minutes but regardless um, so yeah so the pool stage is concluded this weekend and I was messing a lot of words up as well which is why I wanted to change it um, pool, pool, pool stage is concluded they finished. Uh, the pools have gone out now, and people people know who is good, people know who is bad, people know who are through now to the next stages. And if I list them off, Pool A, New Zealand coming in top with France uh, nine points behind them, but going through as well. Uh, only two points clear of Tonga, who stole a win against them in their final game of the pool. A uh, bit of a shock victory, but well done Tonga. Unfortunately, they didn't go through with them. It would have been quite an upset for France, and most likely. Cause a bit of worry for England as well, seeing as France, who were expected to go through, just got knocked out and beaten by Tonga. But uh, alas, we play France in the quarterfinals. Uh, from our pool, England, Argentina, Scotland, Georgia, Romania. Uh, Scotland went out mainly because of us, and it was all to do with points and if they win, lose, draw, that kind of thing, points difference. So that's quite complicated if they would go through or not. But England are through four points clear of Argentina, who come in at second. Um, Pool C, Ireland top that group uh, with Australia two points behind them who go through as well. So the top two, the rest of that group is Italy, USA, Russia. None of those teams really were a big threat. Maybe Italy had a chance, but it was very unlikely. Um, in fairness, I think if they beat Ireland in their final game, they would have taken over place of Ireland, but I'm not sure about that. I can't really remember because I wasn't studying that group very closely. And Pool D, South Africa, Wales, Samoa, Fiji, Namibia, um, the, the Pacific Islanders, which are Samoa and Fiji, as well as Tonga, but they're in Pool A. Uh, that, that group was dubbed by many as the pool, as the pool of death. South Africa, although national, well, not national, reigning champions and uh, a strong side for sure, uh, they did. They, they met their match almost in the first game by Wales, only losing by point 17-16, if I remember, from a disallowed penalty I think it was from James Hook uh, which supposedly went through but they didn't give it. A bit surprising and point of much controversy in the following weeks but that left Wales second place in that group overall. And Samoa and Fiji big big tests for both teams um, or at least should have been. Samoa definitely provided themselves with 10 points coming out of that game two wins two losses in out of that pool even. They definitely show that they were one of the forces to be contended with maybe in the coming years. And it was a game I was looking forward to seeing South Africa play. They struggled with the physicality from Wales in their first game. Uh, mainly Jamie Roberts, who's a Semser, big guy. Um, who caused a lot of problems for them. And I thought Samoa, who are all big guys, if any of you watch the England games, Manu Tulangi, uh, about, I think seven of the brothers went out there to the World Cup playing for different teams. I think most of them played for Samoa. Manu plays for England. I, th I have a feeling one of them plays for another country as well, but I might be completely off, off the ball with that. But uh, big Samoan team, 
very, very uh, big and strong and agile as well. So it's going to be a big test for both those Wales and South Africa teams. But um, yeah, as, as I said, the groups have been finished now. And uh, four Northern Hemisphere teams and four Southern Hemisphere teams go through. Uh, without question, I would call those the four best from both ends of the hemisphere. England, Ireland, Wales and France and New Zealand. Argentina. Argentina coming in fourth. Uh, South Africa and Australia. Um, if you didn't know Australia, sorry, if you didn't know Argentina are coming into a quad nations tournament instead of the tri nations uh, next year, I believe, or is it? Yeah, it will be next year now. Uh, so that's like the new thing for them down there to try and get Argentina playing some more rugby in between because they do, they've barely played any tests between the last World Cup and this one, so it's only fair really to give them a fighting chance. And the way that breaks down for the actual quarter final games, well, you have Ireland, Wales, and England, France, South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. Argentina. Um, Ireland Wales is a pretty close one I think. I think both teams have the potential to win their game. Um, Wales are looking consistent um, but maybe they just don't have that cutting edge to, fit to, uh, to take it to the semi-finals. Who knows? I think Ireland are looking less consistent. They've looked a little bit shaky here and there. Even their victory over Australia which was definitely a good uh, proving ground for not only Ireland as a team but for the rest of the teams in the competition especially so Northern Hemisphere showing that this you know Argentina side isn't at, people mix up this Australia side isn't as hard well not isn't as hard but it is beatable and the rest of the Southern Hemisphere is beatable uh, with the challenge you know Wales showed that to New Zealand uh, to South Africa bloody hell I can't, can't keep my head in one place today uh, with only losing by that point it was an incredibly tight game and unfortunate for Wales New Zealand of course as I said not really challenged in their group they did play incredibly well against France um, France just looked shaky to be honest France are not looking special which is why I think I'm looking quite forward to the England-France game we knocked them out in the semi-finals last World Cup but then again they looked pretty p rough in that one the, the week before they knocked New Zealand out in the quarterfinals when we walked when we walked over Australia again yeah buddy um, so I can see France either playing if iffy off you know and we have a uh, sneaky way into the semi-finals or possibly you know we come up against the France team who decide to actually play and turn up which would be a bit more of a problem because they are a formidable, formidable threat when they actually tie the boots, tie the laces, you know, get the game, they get ahead in the game. South Africa, Australia, going to be a good match, mix up, match up even. I am all over the place. Um, both teams have shown they can beat New Zealand in the warm-ups to the World Cup. Both teams, as they, as they play the Tri-Nations with each other, have played each other, are familiar with each other, a lot of them play Super 14 rugby, which means they play each other in the league system down the, in the Southern Hemisphere almost all year round. A lot of players are familiar with each other. Australia's backs are looking very strong. Quaid Cooper, um, Adam, uh, what's his name? Uh, they've, got a, they've got a centre who's looking really, really good as well. I'm going to try and find his name, so just bear with me. But um, yeah, I'm not completely set on which one he is. They have got some good guys in the team. Let's see if this guy's got it. No, nope, anyway, I'm, I'm looking through fantasy teams because I know somewhere one of the guys I'm in a league with has got him in their team. It's the one I'm after. It is, yeah, Adam Ashley Cooper and uh, Quade Cooper, I think his name is. I may be wrong, maybe they've just got different last names. But those, those two guys are looking really, really strong. Uh, got a lot of flair, got a lot of connection with each other. So they're definitely one to watch. Uh, the Australia backs. Australia forwards have always been known to be a bit funny, a bit rough. Scrummaging, when it comes to scrummaging, they are notoriously bad uh, for it, uh, as we've showed on many occasions. And it's one of the things Ireland made use of. Ireland have got a really ferocious pack, and backs usually to match them, uh, with the likes of O'Driscoll and people like that. O'Driscoll's the only one that really comes to mind. I'm not too familiar with them, but they've got some names. That if you reeled them off, I would know their people. So South Africa, a very physical team, and their backs, again, a group of danger. Uh, the Stein, 
Mornay Steiner. Franz von Stein came out of the World Cup, but Mornay Steiner, uh, a formidable kicker. Uh, Brian Habana, who is well, well, well known for his speed. Um, uh, li -li 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 -li. Who else am I talking about? Uh, let's have a look. Quick click on. Oh, yeah, that's one. All the way down at the bottom of the page, you have a. Uh, where is he? Okay, I've lost him. Anyway, he was a centre. Jacques Ferry, that's all. That's the one! So I was thinking of. So, yeah, as I said, sort of half not really concentrating. South Africa have got backs to match Australia. It just depends how the game plays out. And on the day, it really is decided by flip of coin, to be honest. It could go either way, at least in my opinion. With New Zealand, the hmm, controversial game, possibly. Uh, Argentina came third in the last World Cup, but that was with a huge, impressive team. Uh, August, Augustis Pichot, I can't pronounce his name, but Pichot, he was their scrum half and a formidable player. Um, they have got some injuries, which is a big problem to their crucial players. Uh, I think TSC is out the World Cup now. As have New Zealand, and if you didn't see it or didn't follow it, New Zealand's star player, the iconic figure, Dan Carter, widely renowned as the best player in the world at the moment, or at least has been in the last few years, and he's definitely up there at the moment, uh, has been pulled out of the World Cup with injury. And he is, many see as their key playmaker, not to say they cannot uh, do severe damage without him on the pitch. Um, they have, some, like there's Sonny Bill Williams, Kahui, uh, a number of other players, experienced players, think of Mills Muliayena, Still doesn't seem to have played a game yet, but if, if Graham Henry needs to pull him into the team, you know that guy has got an experienced head on him at the back, at full back, and will win the game from back there. Instructing these two back wingers, and uh, that will become an incredibly dangerous problem for any team that comes up against them. Um, but without Carter, you have to question if they have the, the kicking ability, which isn't a huge thing, but he's such an influential player on my game that. It may be the undoing of them, and if Argentina really bloody go for it, maybe, maybe we'll have a shock result on the uh, October the 9th, which would be lovely, of course, for anyone else, because what basically happens if uh, New Zealand got knocked out is, well, Argentina go through to play. I'm, I want to say I was in Australia, mainly because I have family and friends who are South African, and I just want to gloat that they got knocked out. And Australia are beatable, and I think if Australia beat Argentina, they've already shown that, well, Ireland can beat them. We've beaten Ireland in the warm-up to the World Cup, uh, 29, I think it was, and we've beaten Australia two past World Cups. Easily done. Um, <laughs> and I think, to be honest, Ireland and Wales, Wales do look consistent, but I just think, if we can really fucking go for it, we might be able to beat them. I think Ireland are the ones that are like, they're a bit like France, they're sometimes in there, sometimes got the head on, sometimes they haven't, so... Hopefully we get Ireland playing really well against Wales and then really bad against us. Maybe, with the luck of the devil, that would happen. And then you get an Australia-England final, which is manageable. But I think, realistically, uh, with a little bit of luck on our side, I think we'll see ourselves in the final with New Zealand. And uh, maybe things won't be so fortunate then. But um, we'll see. It's going to be an interesting World Cup from here on out. And yeah. So unfortunately I didn't actually, you know, the whole live commentary thing... Um, this is a weird kick because of the wind, but um, you know, I, 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 I sort of was on and off all the time when I was doing that live commentary. I was mixing things up a lot worse than I was in this game, which, it, in this commentary, in this take, which if you uh, been listening closely, I've mixed my teams up a little bit, mixed my players up, paused to gather mm, people, so it's all a bit of a mix up. Uh, I don't know why I'm so sort of out of it this today. I was I was kind of in the mood to play out. I'm going to carry on playing with my Australia team, who, if you didn't know, are just my school team, or my club team even. I just made a load of players. And um, I've got a little bit more Battlefield 3, for anyone that is wondering. I'm still playing the Bay. I might go on the next couple of days. We'll see. Um, I've got a couple of good videos, I think. Uh, some nice, impressive gameplay. Uh, with the recon kit, at least. See how that goes down with you guys. Get a good shot with the semi autos, they're a bit funny at the moment. I've, I know I've completely gone off topic here, but yeah, I'm just filling up some time. 
Uh, what's the other thing I need? I actually need to say something now. Hold on. How's it? Rugby Challenge, which is uh, made by a Southern Hemisphere team, I think. Not team. Southern Hemisphere developer. I have a feeling. Sid Hines, something. Uh, they made a lot of rugby league games, but they made a rugby union game now with the World Cup. And it's the one that had a lot of publishing issues. And it's coming out sometime in October. So it should be here in a few days, I think. And I'm going to do some footage for that. Um, supposedly it's much better than this game. It's got a lot more to it. So you might see quite a bit from that, actually. Um, and I guess it's because I want to take this direction in my channel two ways. Much like Merciless Warus, a friend of mine, he does Fallout alongside FPS. And I'll continue to do Battlefield content. And I understand why these these kind of videos don't get as many views a little bit of variety here and there some guys are just not interested and that's totally understandable I have the same uh, feelings towards some of the people I'm subscribed to when they post other stuff up I just tend to ignore it exit you know and that's totally cool I'm totally fine with that always though if I do appreciate if you do come onto this video to acknowledge and not just be a be a simple viewer um, you know give me give me some feedback give me questions I know a lot of people don't know a lot about this rugby game uh, I mean this game in general and rugby as a sport please do get on to me if you've got any questions I know one one guy on Twitter asked me to explain the game and I did my best not really my best but I do want to do that in a future video I just decided I want to go to go over in the details of the World Cup in general and how things are moving on so that's actually about it uh, as Wilkinson takes this kick makes it 26-7 uh, a bit of a contrast to the scoreline of the actual game which was if I can find the text document when I've got it 16-12, if I didn't say that already. Uh, a bit of a scraped win, but yeah. That's about it, guys. So I'll leave you in peace, and uh, speak to you soon. Yeah, functional, pragmatic in its own way. Quietly impressive. Well, thank you so much.